Hello class, this is section 7.7 .7, and in this video we are going to discuss Bessel functions in the Bessel equation. In our previous video, we had this form of the Bessel equation, but let's modify it a little further. In particular, we want to derive a bit more information about this mu constant over here. Remember that mu appears in this eigenvalue problem for g theta. Now you may recall that this problem appears as a vibrating membrane problem for a circle and theta tells us about the angle of the solution. And since we are working on the circle, we have these initial conditions. g of minus pi is equal to g pi. Um, did I say initial conditions? I meant boundary conditions. We have these two boundary conditions. And the other one is that g prime of minus pi is equal to g prime of pi, where prime refers to derivative with respect to theta, of course. And this is actually an eigenvalue problem that we have solved already in chapter 2. And in particular, the solution is that our eigenvalues are m squared for m equals 0, 1, 2, so 0, 1, 4, 9, and so on. And we have two eigenfunctions for each m either sine m theta or cosine m theta. Anyway, uh, this means that we can rewrite our equation, replacing our mu with m squared. Also, let's use the product rule on this term. So we have z second derivative of f plus z squared, sorry, I meant z squared, second derivative of f, times z times the first derivative of f, by the product rule, the first term, plus z squared, and we know that mu is m squared, so z squared minus m squared, fz equals zero. And this is known as the Bessel equation. This is an extremely complicated equation, and one that I don't think many of you would have seen in your ordinary differential equations class. In fact, I think you could probably teach an entire course, entire semester course, just based on this Bessel equation. It is an important equation and very interesting, but we will not have the ability to cover the full theory of the Bessel equation. So I'm just going to give you a very, very brief summary of the facts that you need for this course. Firstly, the Bessel equation has no closed form solutions that involve elementary functions. So you cannot write the solution of the Bessel function in terms of sine, cosine, exponential, polynomials, etc. So the solutions are so complicated that it's really difficult to even write them down. Secondly, this differential equation has what we call a singularity at z equals zero. And this means that solutions of the Bessel equation might go to infinity as z approaches zero. I don't think that you have encountered any differential equation of these properties unless you have had a very, very advanced differential equations course. However, despite these facts, we can talk about the solutions of the Bessel equation, and these are known as the Bessel functions. Since the Bessel function is a second order equation, we expect there to be two linearly independent solutions. And let's call the first one JMZ. And remember that M comes from this M term over here, and M um, ranges from 0, 1, 2, and so on. JMZ is known as the Bessel function of the first kind and order M. It's also known as the well-behaved solution. And this is because this solution doesn't go to infinity as Z equals approaches 0, even though there's a singularity in the Bessel function. Secondly, we have YMZ, which is the Bessel function of second kind, and order M. And this is known as the singular solution because this solution does head towards infinity as uh, z goes to zero. Thankfully, Wolfram Alpha does a good job of plotting the graphs of these solutions, JMZ and YMZ. So let's take a look at uh, what Wolfram Alpha has to say. So here on Wolfram Alpha, if you type Bessel 0z, where zero is the m, so here we got the j0z for m equals 0, and Wolfram Alpha will let you look at what the Bessel function looks like. 
And this is what the Bessel function of uh, the first kind looks like. As you see, it's well behaved, even at z equals zero. So how, how the Bessel functions all behave is that they are going to oscillate and dec decay as z gets large, whether in the positive direction or the negative direction. And Wolfram Alpha also tells you some other information about the Bessel functions. In particular, if you're really curious as to how to write them down, there are some representations in the form of series, and these look really ugly, and some representations in terms of integrals, but there's no way to just write down a simple expression for the Bessel functions, even for the m equals zero case. And of course, you can write down, look at the J1z case. I'll give Wolfram Alpha a little bit of time. As you can see, it looks roughly the same. Um, you always have this oscillation that decays as uh, z goes to infinity, and you have all these integral representations too, if you care about them. Where are they? Yeah, there they are. And if you care about what the, the second kind Bessel functions look like, just add a y over here. So let's say Bessel y from, of m equals zero. And what happens then is that we have this formula. As you can see, it goes to infinite, minus infinity as z approaches zero. And you may notice that when z is negative, it's actually an imaginary number. So this function is really only well behaved when z is real and goes to infinity as z hits a zero. This is what it looks like if you look at a bigger scale. And more or less, all of the y bus functions look like that too. So if you try Bessel of m equals 2, of the second kind, well, let's try 3 instead, just to make things a bit more interesting. So this is the second kind Bessel function. And I guess Wolfram Alpha, yeah, here you go. And again, you see that it goes to infinity. It oscillates after that. And we have also these really complicated series expansions and really complicated um, yeah, really complicated integrals to write them down in. So again, uh, we, we will never have to think about how to write down the, the Bessel functions. They are really complicated. But the important thing to know is that for the second kind function, that it hits towards infinity as the host goes to zero. And for the first kind, the function, the Bessel function is always well behaved. And of course, since the Bessel function is a second order equation, we know that the general solution of the Bessel equation is going to be of the form f equals c1 of ymz plus c2 of, why did I do it this way, jmz plus c2 of ymz, where jm is the first kind and ym is the second kind. So this is the general solution of the Bessel equation.